welcome to our Agents of Change series, where we explore the future of business, leadership and innovation. For today's episode, we're going to look at the potential for London to become the AI capital of the world. And this is more than a pipe dream. The UK AI market is currently valued at almost £17 billion, and this is expected to reach £800 billion by 2035. Well, to help me explore this in more detail, I'm delighted to welcome Janet Coyle, MD of Growth at London & Partners, for today's conversation. Welcome, Janet. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your role at London & Partners and also what London & Partners does. Sure. Great to be here. Thank you. Um, So London and Partners is essentially what we call a growth agency for London. So our our mission is to really create economic growth, but that's resilient, inclusive, sustainable. So we do that by attracting visitors into London. um, But my area um, of responsibility is really the business side, especially high growth businesses. So attracting businesses from around the world, to come and establish a presence in London, help them scale here, help them thrive, but also help lots of London scale-ups, London tech companies essentially, help them get the right investment connections and help them win international business. And then we're doing really well as the UK, aren't we? We're only behind the US and China globally in terms of being a tech ecosystem. So something is very right here in London. Absolutely. Some of the data sets actually say that we're, we're even higher than uh, the US and China. But that's when you look at VC investment. I think we're number three. We're ranked number three. When you look at artificial intelligence, of course, um, we are attracting so many businesses into London right now. We've got OpenAI, we've got Scale AI, Harvey AI. They're all coming in. Um, so it's a really, really exciting time right now. Janet, so what do you think businesses have to do to be ready for AI? So the businesses that we're working with, those that are seem to be getting ready and are adopting AI much quicker are those that are getting their data in order. It's so important to have that sort of clean data. And of course, in London, what's so fantastic is that rich data because it's so diverse, um, whether it's financial data or if it's just client data within your businesses. But they have to really get that sort of even bring experts in to do the data analysis before you start then using AI, because otherwise it's you're not going to be able to be as productive as you would like to be. So what is it about London that makes it so appealing for AI businesses in particular? What do we have? Lots of reasons, Sasha, really. I think um, number one is talent. That's why lots of businesses um, are coming into London. We've got a very diverse talent pool. We've got diverse data sets. We speak over 300 languages in London. And that sort of diversity and inclusivity is is really attractive for AI companies wanting to test new models. But also we have access to to customers, 250 banks here, you know, we've got more American banks than New York. Um, So that sort of penetration into the customer base is really important. And then the third reason is really accessing the growth capital. So we've seen over the last three years, eight billion dollars going into AI companies in London. And that's that's more than Paris and Berlin combined. So I think, you know, we're seeing this real momentum and that momentum creates that sort of more and more energy and attractiveness about a global city and attracting those businesses to come in. Do you think that's going to continue because we've got this new Labour government in power now? They said they were going to produce this budget for growth. A lot of businesses don't feel it is so business friendly. Do you think that's going to hamper these ambitions that we have for London being an AI capital? No, I don't. It's early days for one, isn't it? And I, uh, the conversations I've had with government, both locally and nationally, they are very committed to a strategy around science, innovation, growth. There's growth plans being written all around the country at the moment, including here in London. And that frontier innovation, which is very much AI, quantum, robotics, is at the heart of that. Okay, that's good to hear. And what part do you think that London being a financial capital plays in attracting all of this talent and tech and innovation to London? 
I think it plays a huge part. I mean, we've been a financial capital for centuries, haven't we? And the expertise that has been developed in not just sort of financial services, but financial data sets and that data analytics is a really key component when you're looking at AI, machine learning, and, and, and having to sort of analyze that data and, and build AI companies. So I think it's been a really critical component to making London so successful as an AI, AI center. And then you've got fintechs, you know, we're number one in the world for fintech. And that means AI companies coming into London can actually test loads of their products um, with these fintech companies. And it's a real safe space. We've got a sandbox. We've got the Bank of England, of course, London Stock Exchange. We've got a really strong ecosystem in which to test out new products. I mean, it's amazing. We are this hub for innovation and creativity. We have so many examples of amazing companies that have started off here in the UK. Do you think the education system is moving at the speed that it needs to move to equip the next generation for the skill set that they're going to need to you know, create more companies, to run these companies? Very good question. I don't think it's ever going to be um, adapting quick enough. Um, there's a lot of um, research being done at the moment about the education sector in the UK, and there's a big ambition to, to look at how we can upskill, upskill our next generation a little bit earlier. Um, having said that, I think from a university perspective, there's now 20, 27 universities in London that are running courses in machine learning, in AI. So they are absolutely adapting to the needs of industry. I think with schools, you find it's some schools are really adapting AI quite enthusiastically, quite quickly. Others are a little bit more hesitant. Um, but ultimately, we're on a journey, aren't we? And, you know, there's charities like Founders for Schools that are using AI to find a really efficient way to bring entrepreneurs into schools to inspire um, our, hopefully, our entrepreneurs of tomorrow about the importance of studying maths, science. That's already making a big difference, but we need more initiatives like that. Yeah, absolutely. Founders for Schools is an excellent organisation. Um, tell me about some of the most exciting AI startups that we've got here in the UK and specifically in London. Sure, there's lots of them. Um, so one of the bigger ones that's getting a lot of news attention at the moment is Wave AI. You may have heard of them. It was first created out at Cambridge, built the business here in London. It's autonomous vehicles, essentially, and they raised a billion dollars earlier this year to really scale the business. And I was in Silicon Valley a few weeks ago, and they're expanding over there now and really competing with some of the leading players. So that's really exciting. And be interesting to see how they, you know, what we decide to do as a country in terms of autonomous vehicles. That's one. And then you've got some other players like uh, Autogen AI, which I think Salesforce has actually invent invested in. You've got Harvey AI, which is disrupting the legal infrastructure. Um, but then you've got some of the bigger players, of course, with Salesforce, where we are today, who are doing an incredible you know, playing an incredible role in actually educating developers, charities, startups in the in the adoption of AI. You've got Google setting up an edu education centre in, in uh, Camden. Um, Apple just a couple of months ago, they've just, Tim Cook was over here, um, the CEO, and was talking about the incredible talent that he sees here in London. And they've also just launched their AI hub as well, more for education. Um, but he was saying that he can live, feel, breathe that vibrancy here and that sort of innovation um, and the fact that lots of his employees are here because it's such a great place to live. That's so good to hear, especially coming from Tim Cook. I know, amazing. <laughs> wow. Well, how do you think London can foster collaboration between these startups that we have and big tech? Yeah, so that's really important, as we know, in any ecosystem, we need to make sure that collaboration, the partnerships are really tight in order to sort of not just drive innovation, but to scale it. Um, so Salesforce is one example of an initiative that's absolutely committed to doing that by, by bringing those developers, they can drop in, they can do training, they can work with a large company like Salesforce. Um, at London and Partners, what we've been doing is building an open innovation, what we call a fellowship, where we've been 
educating over a three month um, ex exec education program, essentially, um, cohorts of really senior innovation leaders within these larger corporates about how to engage with startups how to sort of share best practice in open innovation. And that's really starting to pay dividends. So we've, we've managed to now get some proof of concepts with the startups and with the bigger players. Um, but it's a really, really important that we keep driving um, this sort of collaboration to really create the, the future that we want. You know, they say here that we're excellent at startups, but we're less good at scaling up. What do you think needs to be addressed to improve that situation? Yes, well, there's a, there's a lot, as you probably know, happening across the UK at the moment to try and focus in on what we can do to help more of our fantastic, innovative businesses to scale. Um, growth capital being one, and I, I mentioned earlier that, you know, over eight billion has gone into AI companies, but we need to unlock more of that growth capital and there's more being done to try and, to try and do that with pension funds and other initiatives. Um, but we're also looking at London as how we create more of that sort of deep technology coming out of our universities. So DeepMind is a great example that came out of UCL. Um, and it came out, now it's, it's transforming healthcare. But at the time when it was created, it was this new AI model. And if we can create more of those kind of deep minds that does deep tech, and that's very much at the heart of our growth plan in London, is how we can then support those ideas, turn them into proof of concepts, make sure they get the funding they need, and then wrap around that support to help them scale and keep scaling. Um, so there's lots of plans in place to make that happen over the next three, five, ten years. I mean, we're on a journey. It's not going to happen it's overnight. It's a journey. It's a journey. <laughs> but then we also want them to IPO here in London. Yes, we don't we do. want them to go stateside, do we? And that's also quite crucial. We want them to it stay is, here. It is, but just last month there was a US company, that, an AI company that IPO'd on the London Stock Exchange. So we are seeing more and more of it happen. We've had some really good results lately. That's good. That's good. You mentioned that you were in Silicon Valley recently. Do you think there are any learnings that we can take from Silicon Valley and implement here in London? Good question. I think we've been taking learnings for many years from Silicon Valley, to be honest, and it's particularly around the, the ecosystem, the pay it forward. I think what Silicon Valley does have is a number of successful entrepreneurs that have gone on and then they're reinvesting in the earlier stage businesses. And we're starting to see that now and the, the pay it forward mindset that you have and that growth mindset in Silicon Valley. I do see that now in London and, and the UK. I think they could probably learn quite a bit from us as well, if I'm being honest. I think I still travel quite a bit over to the States and I feel that what we have in the UK is we genuinely have an ambition to build technology that's inclusive, that's sustainable, that's resilient. And we're aiming to sort of to make sure that we're creating jobs that everybody can access. And that's really important. You know, we need to be building products, technology that's inclusive, that's robust, that's innovative. So I think we lean in a lot more to that inclusivity, the ethics around building the, the future of tech. Janet, tell me, what kind of impact do you think agentic AI will have on the businesses that you're working with? So the businesses I work with um, are already talking about agentic AI, and I think that it'll have a huge difference on productivity, efficiency, because essentially it's a digital workforce that takes away a lot of those mundane routine tasks. So it frees up their workforce, their employees, their human employees, to work on innovation and, and driving that growth in different ways. Are you surprised yourself by, I mean, I think we've all been surprised, but just for someone like you who's been in this space for a while, are you surprised by how fast technology is moving? And particularly now we've got generative AI, agentic AI, and you know, there is a whole world of possibilities ahead of us. Does that surprise you? I don't think it surprises me. I think it excites me more than anything else. I, to be honest, I think a lot of these technologies have been around a while. It was only when OpenAI went public with ChatGBT a year and a half ago, whenever it was, that the whole of the public became really aware of this technology and the uses of it. But it had been around for quite a while. And I think now the fact that 
it can make such a difference to detecting cancer earlier, you know, to make personalised medicine available to so many more people. The way that those user cases of uh, addressing climate change and health mainly um, means that we're ready to embrace this. So I don't think I am surprised, but maybe because I'm working in the sector that I've seen it sort of evolve, I've seen it coming. Um, so maybe... Maybe you don't the feel the person, pace. You don't feel the pace as much not, as everyone no, else. No, maybe not. But I feel, you know, London as a city, we've reinvented ourselves, haven't we, for hundreds and hundreds of years, which is what I love about this city. And I feel now we're at this inflection point of we are reinventing ourselves again and embracing this, this technology. So um, maybe some people do feel it's happening quite quickly, um, but for good reason, really. Yeah, it's very exciting. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, a final question from me, looking into the future. In your vision, how will AI be integrated into the daily lives of Londoners by 2030? By 2030. Not okay. that far off, no, actually. No, it's not that far off. Well, some of it is starting to happen. If you think about our daily lives and the way maybe we shop, for example, now we, we're doing a lot more online shopping, aren't we now? And the fact that there'll be a lot more personalised approach to shopping and we'll maybe having our, our goods delivered by drones and possibly by autonomous vehicles, who knows? Um, and then healthcare again, I see as all being hopefully receiving a higher quality of healthcare and again being able to detect some of these sort of diagnosis of sort of problems in healthcare much earlier on. I think it's also going to be much more data driven which will really drive totally. AI as well. Really exciting and then out in, in Stratford at the moment with UCL they're already using AI to do robotic surger surgery on brain tumours it's, it's incredible, but we'll start to see that more commonplace rather than just in one little part of London. Um, and then transport wise, you know, AI will start to make our, hopefully our public transport systems more efficient well, with the scheduling and capacity. I think we would all really welcome <laughs> yeah. that. So climate, I think we will all be using AI more efficiently in the home, whether it's lighting, energy. Um, and then in the workplace, I think we'll all be, you know, using these AI agents to be driving productivity, driving efficiency and being able to probably have much greater reach with what we do. So that's also really exciting. Janet, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your thoughts. It's clear there's a huge opportunity for London to lead from the front and we're definitely going to be making the most of it, aren't we? Definitely. Thanks, Sasha. Well, that's all we have time for today, but we'll be back next time with our next episode, talking all things scaling up with an exciting brand who recently made the Financial Times' fastest growing companies list. Hope to see you then.